that Gary wasn't going to be here. So it was, oh boy. boy. And of course, I'm busier than a one armed paper hanger right now. So that was. Uh, but fortunately, I had a little, I had some thoughts up on the shelf. So I'm going to ask you a question. And there's going to be a half a dozen pat answers that will superficially cover the answer to the question. And the question is, how come you're in that seat today? Why are you here? Why are you in this building? Okay? Fire out an answer to me. What comes to mind? Say that. A drawing to be here with the body. Okay. Anybody else? What's that? Chosen to be here. Okay. What else? Go ahead, Sister Barbara. You need to be here. Right. How about somebody else? A desire. Good. Predestined. Um, all good answers. And all the right answers. But yet, beyond the answer, why are you here? Is it because Donna's here? Is it because I'm here? Is it, is it for the sun, freedom in the Sunday school class? Is it that we have another mic? Is it the worship in the house? We're here because we're here because he's here. Why do we come because he's here? Commitment. You know the great thing about Jesus? He answered nearly every question with another question. And so I think that's probably what I'm doing is I'm Questioning your answer. Go ahead, Irene. Can I say something? Sure. And you know, you you go through things in your life, and you know, I've been here since the beginning, and I had to one day come to grips with myself and say, why am I here? Am I here because my family's here? There's another good one. Yeah. Because, you know, am I here because uh, I feel that because the church started in my house, I have to be here? You know, you go through all these things. But when God gets hold of your heart, you're here because your desire is to be here because this is where God has placed you. And it doesn't matter. I'm here because of the word of God. I get fed here. I get encouraged here. I grow here. And I love the people here. But the main thing that I'm here for is because this is where I get fed. Let me and ask you another question. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm done? I'm not, I'm not going anymore. Yes. You know. You want to know how many Can I tell a story on Irene now? <laughs> That's why I'm saying what I'm saying, because I did. I, I mean, tell me you don't ever, not Listen, once ever left you here in 30 years. If you haven't had that thought, <laughs> if you have not had that thought, there's something wrong. That's why I'm saying, yeah, because I had to come to grips with that in my life and say I'm serving God because 
I want to serve God, and this is where God put me. Has got another hand in the back there. I'll add this thought. <laughs> Lord, where could I go? Where <laughs> right. I can't. Where could I go from your presence, Lord? Yeah. I have a question. <laughs> Ooh, a question for a question. Come yeah, on. I girl. do. And I've always had this question. And seeing you're talking about it, how how do I really know that this is where God placed me? I mean, I'm coming, but I mean, I come, I'm like, oh, oh, oh God placed me here. Did he? Do I, I, but you the, keep that's saying another that, question I bet everybody's keep, asked themselves. Right, because you keep saying that, oh, don't go anywhere else because God placed you in this place. Right. How do I know that for real? That's fine. That's good. That's good. There was another, another hand up over here and then over here. <laughs> um, in the eight and a half years that I've been here, I can, I know that there's been many Sundays or Thursdays where I've said to myself, I, just, I don't want to go today. I yep. feel awful. I, this, that, the other thing, you know, and yet at the same time, I have this still small voice that said, go. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It does, all I get is this just go. I get this unction. I have to go. And I, when I do come on those days, those are the days that I you get, get rewarded. I, I it, no, it's not a reward. It's but I get exactly what I'm. I need to get to get me through that situation. Yeah. And I don't see it as a reward. I see it as God is. I'm listening and responding. To, I'm listening to what God is saying, and I'm obeying to what He's telling me to do. And you know, we're talking about why am I here. I continue to come here because of the first day I came. I walked through those double doors after Sunday school at 11 o'clock, and the first thought I had was, this is home. I didn't right. know that Sister Irene and the Stefanics were here, and I've known them for years because I went to school with Sarah. Uh -huh. you know. And the first person that greeted me was Byrne. And she gave me a hug and said, we're so glad you're here. Asked me my name, blah, blah, blah. And... You know, the second person I saw, the, and the first person I recognized was Irene, and I said, this is home, no matter what, end of story. And I've gone to other places in the last few years, and no matter what, I still have the feeling this is home. You know that, that little cliche, you. home is where your heart is? Yep. I'll give a Sister Fran answer. All right. <laughs> Fam family and fellowship, because you can get good word at home. Trust me, I've sat at home many times. You got good word, you get good word, you can get good worship and get it all, but the family and the fellowship and the camaraderie. And just, just for the record, 90% of the reason I'm here is because of Donna. She's relentless. She never gives up while I'm back here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to elevate her to sainthood next week. I'm here because my former pastor said, I am going to Christ Life Fellowship Church. My pastor is Pastor Dale Frazier. That's where I'm going. Yeah. So if you're going with me, that's where I'm going. And the word of God said to me, when you follow, I'm going to follow you as I follow Christ. Yeah. And I followed my pastor, my former pastor here. And I am so glad that this is where my former pastor said, this is where we're going to be. And it didn't matter what the ride was, whether it was going to be 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it doesn't matter what the ride was. I wasn't yeah. concerned about that. And then as I began to understand and, and, and hear the word of God more and more, God set you in the body as it pleased him. That's why I'm here. It pleased Christ to set me in this body with these people so I can be a part of this family. And I am blessed beyond measure being here. And I would never leave. I know we had talked about saying I'm done and I'm not going to come. And I, I recall sometimes in the early years, a Thursday morning, I would get out of bed and be getting ready to go to work. And I'm saying to myself, 
I'm not going tonight. I am too stinking tired. Already. It's not, it's not 8.30 in the morning yet, and I've already got it spoken in. And then on those nights when I went, it was, like you said, what I needed to hear was there. In the back, Sister Byrne. These are all great responses and great reasonings. Okay, most of you know why I, I'm here, so I won't go through that, but a long time ago, and I don't even know what this was all about, but I was just fed up and I was leaving and that was it, and I wrote Pastor a letter, but I was too afraid to give it to him, so I stuck it in the mail slot in his door and I ran. And by the time I got home, he was already talking to Bud on the phone. Uh-oh. <laughs> he said, you get her over here. <laughs> and I didn't want to go, but I did. And uh, uh, I still don't remember what it was all about. But anyway, anyway yeah, right. I was in trouble. <laughs> right. That's it. Things happen, and, and we respond somehow. And a couple hours later, what was that about? Why was I... What happened? I think some of us, me personally, I've had that letter in the mail slot in my mind. Yeah, know? sure. Plus the fact that a lot of times I did the same thing, and then I, I would stay home and watch it on the Internet, and then the Lord showed me you can't get that same thing through no. the Internet. You can't get the fellowship. So, no, yeah. not at all. No, it's, it's the spirit of the moment. <laughs> he asks that every day. <laughs> um, well, let's say it this way. Bud said, if you have never had that thought, if you've never had that thought, and I'm sure that I, can't, I just can't remember a time, but I'm sure that if I ever had the thought, say, I think I'm just going to stay home. <laughs> you know, and... But the, but the issue is, when the voice of God says, you can't, you just can't, well, then you can't. And, and if you think about it, I, I can't tell you how many times in the past 10 years that I've said, Lord, um, uh, I think when I turned 65, I said, by the time I'm 70, we're going to have another leadership in the house. And God never set the arrangements for that. <coughs> then I turned 70, and I said, by the time I'm 75, <clears throat> we're going to have an, another leadership in the house, okay? And, and, I, and, I, and I got some thoughts about what the future is going to hold. But, but the issue is, <laughs> well, I had this thought last night. That's why I'm saying something. <laughs> I'm saying, Lord... When are, you, when are you going to? And Fran and I sat down. This shouldn't be, but we're, we're, we're doing another home modernization. And I'm working eight, eight to nine hours a day in the house trying to do something. Just, so it occupies your mind trying to buy detailed little things like faucets and all these little things. And she says to me last night, well... Are we going to watch something good tonight? And I said, yeah. So I got my trusty little pad out and turned on the Comcast and listened to Larry Randolph. That let my, my appetite get going, you know, and challenge, and all of a sudden, Randall Worley comes on, and so at 10.30 last night, I'm still watching Randall Worley, which I'm usually in bed Saturday night by 10. But he fed my spirit to the point that says, look it, Moses never got started till 80. That's right. That's right. It's true. That's right. It's true. At 40, God put him out in the middle of the wilderness yep. for 40 years. Yep, yep. 
feed sheep. Taking care of somebody else's sheep. And I and their daughter. And God had another plan. So you know what? To me, this is what God brought me to. You know? If I was God, I wouldn't have picked me. But I'm not God. He is, and he chose. Maybe he chose me just because I'm too bullheaded to quit. That's it. Amen on that. <laughs> okay, Travis has a thought. It's good to be fed, and it's good to have a home, and it's good to have the fellowship, and it's good to get uh, filled up with the word. But if you are not testing the spirits and you're not continually saying, God, is this where you have me? And if you're not continually having that fellowship with God and you're just being here because you're getting fed, and you're not continually saying, God, where are you assigning me? What's your assignment for me? How is it that you want me to serve you? Then mm. you may be missing what's going on. I'm not saying that we should all be just going willy-nilly all over the place. But we all, always have to keep our, our, our ears and eyes open to the call of God. Always. Even inside the house. We may be doing something that is a good thing, but maybe we're in the wrong part of the place. But the fact of the matter is, if we're not continually going to God and saying, what is your assignment for me? then we may be just being stubborn and bullheaded at times. Yeah. And again, I reiterate, we, I'm not saying anything about just jumping church and jumping ship, all that, because when you're assigned somewhere, you get assigned somewhere. That's why Cynthia and I are here. We've been assigned here, spiritually assigned here. Last year, I had a, a church trying to get me to, to go, and they wanted me to be part of their ministry, and they wanted to teach me how to be a pastor and all that. I, t I said, no way. This is my place here. Mm. I'm not going. I had, a play, I, had, I had a great job opportunity that was trying to drag me away and lots of money and all that. I said, no, this is where God has assigned us. And they don't understand that. But when God assigns you right. to a place, you stay to that assignment. Right. But you don't just shut your eyes and ears off after you've been assigned to that place. Just like at any other job. Yep. At your job, you give an assignment. Yes, you work on it until the boss says, all right, now you go to this part. You always have to be obedient and faithful to the word of God. At all times. Giving 100%. Yes. You stay 100% committed until God says, all right, now, yeah. you get, now I'm going to move you a little bit. And then you're 100% committed to that. So th there's nothing wrong with, the, with always, you know, like we were joking about it, writing a letter and, you know, I'm ready to move on. Because what you're doing is you're saying, God, I'm not sure where, you're, where, you're, where your heart is for my life. But there's fact, a the lot of people is, that struggle with that, too. Absolutely. Oh, it, yeah. It's bound to be a struggle. It, it's a hard walk. There's nothing easy about it. So let's put it another way. If you aren't struggling, are you really where you belong? Because there's nothing easy about the Christian walk. If it's easy and, you, and everything's going smooth for you, are you really getting deep into where you're supposed to be? Because let's be honest, the Christian walk is a battle. Yeah. There's another, there's another uh, mindset that uh, uh, people will come and say, okay, well, I need to go somewhere, and this is as good a place as any, but I really don't want to be, don't make me do anything. Right? Right. The guy that stands on the sidewalk while the work is being done or the parade is going by or whatever but go ahead Danny my heart's kind of beating a little bit faster I'm I'm probably on the same medication you are so I think if I ran around a block a couple of hundred times I'd get it up to a hundred beats a minute <laughs> you know you know what I, I had a thought first of all I want to tell you something and I'm not sure where this fits in I had a dream last night of course, it's food related. I'm, I'm walking. Food or work. Food or work. I'm walking down the aisle in a grocery store, and I'm looking up at the top shelf, and on a package, it looked like a round package, like of Quaker Oats. 
this is what it said. I wrote it down. If I have, you have. That's all it said. If I have, you have. And, and, I, and I'm still trying to piece it all together. I think God just threw that out at me and said, you figure it out. Yeah. But now I'm listening to you. If you quit, if you've had thoughts of quitting, I've had thoughts of quitting. I could ask that to Jesus. I could, I could say, have you ever had thoughts of quitting? And I said, Father, if there was any way yeah. to take this from me, yeah. you know. On another note, if, if he's done miracles, if he has, I have. He's not saying, I will. I've probably already done more miracles in my lifetime Amen. than I thought. We've Amen. prayed over situations at home. But my thought is this. It's already gone by, Bern. We've We very quickly, what if we're, as, I don't want to puff anybody up. What if we're especially gifted, though? Some men's work go before them. Some men's work follow up. And some men's work follow after them. Yeah. Now, what if God places you in a church where you think you don't belong there? But God says, I'm going to put you there. You're going to be one of 100 people in there, and you're going to think you don't belong there, but you're going to change those 100 people. But they quit. They go someplace else. And, because, and you look at people like that. Because their spirit did not witness with his spirit. Yeah. But that's what I'm trying to get at is I feel really that every one of us has a, a, a great, great call in their life. And, and my thoughts as I'm listening to everybody is, yeah, we all, we all have thoughts of quitting. No more than at work, at work especially. I don't know how many times I quit my job. Church, not so much, you know. I have had thoughts of, wow, it's beautiful out during the summer, you know. What a great beach day today. You know, yeah, but, oh yeah. but I'm in church, so we try to rush home, so at least we can lay by the pool for a few hours. Yeah. But the greater thought is this. I think God's expectations of how we live our lives nowhere compares to what our thoughts were. I think when we gather, and I, and I hope this, this isn't too hard, when we gather on <coughs> Thursday or Sunday, what we should be sharing is, you know that guy who works next to me? I gave him a prophetic word this week, you know? Or I bumped into a guy in the street, the, over, the one over by Home Depot. He was out there collecting money. I gave him a $20 bill, pulled him over to the car, prayed with him, gave him some words of wisdom, and I just seen him step away from the curb. Yeah. Really, that's what it's all about. It isn't just about gathering, although I firmly believe in, a bo in, in gathering with a body of believers. This has to be a home base for us. Yeah. We launch out from here. That doesn't mean we, we decide that we're going to travel all over the country ministering to people, but this is where we give everybody the good news of what we did during a week to, to touch people's lives. That's how things get multiplied. What about discouragement and or insults. You have something happen between you and another brother or sister. We've had people leave the church because they were offended deeply by somebody else. Never reading the scriptures that Jesus said offenses are going to come. which is where we get our word scandal from, is that Greek word of offense. And discouragements. You know, when that begins, it's real easy to dwell on that thought and become more deeply discouraged. But it's up to us. David had to 
stir himself up. So we've had some real... Did you want to say something, Ronnie? So we've had some interesting thoughts about why we're here and what might keep us here but what about the scripture that says no man cometh so what's that but the spirit draws so your presence here is not of choice Your presence here has nothing to do with your choice, your emotion, your feeling, your thought, or your understanding. <laughs> As he sits in the heavens and laughs. <laughs> but no man comes, but it's the spirit that draws. So now we're looking at a whole other And I say element, a magnetic influence of sorts. There's something that keeps you coming back. And it's not the inbreeding of the Hatfields and the McCoys that is throughout the church. <laughs> There's something about the presence of the Lord. The Spirit draws. You respond. You come. Not knowing why. Except on those rare occasions when the Spirit of God hits, starts with the worship, or starts with the Sunday school. Starts with preparation. And expectation, obviously. But coming in to the structure, I mean, we're structured. We have, we're going to do Sunday school, praise and worship in the Word. And if God breaks out in any of those, hallelujah. Now, we have had times of refreshing. I have, I have three pages of notes that I haven't even opened, haven't touched. No man comes, but it's the spirit that draws. And so we come answering that, that magnetic call, that, that pull, that draw on the spirit. And if... If we can release ourselves to the draw of that spirit and not be involved with the some 2,000 conversations that happen in the course of a service or not be involved with the I gotta do's which I am so guilty of. And not be involved with the prison of our own self that keeps us from releasing the expression to that spirit that is drawing. That the effervescence of the presence of the anointed spirit within the house becomes so intense that like the song says all things become shadow in the light of you there's something happening in the spirit realm far and above 
whatever we can think That's for sure. or perceive That's for sure. or wish to happen. We can't make it happen. We can't get up with a cord of whips and whip the worship team to get the right song. It's got to happen. And when it happens, we can't get out here and start whipping the assembly into worship. It's got to happen. But I've been occasionally, rarely, in that atmosphere. In that presence, yep, where the intensity of the Spirit of God was so strong, like the writer of the accounts of Azusa Street, we, we knew no man after the flesh. You, you didn't, they, they said they were laying on the floor or underneath the plank benches and aware of others, aware of others, not people, not acquaintances, not friends, not relatives, aware of others in the spirit realm, in the room, that cloud of witnesses. It's a secret. It's a mystery. Why are all these crazy people coming here? It's a mystery. It really is a mystery. I mean, we can, we can put all of these thoughts together that we've had and put them in a blender and pour them out. And it's still a mystery. Deuteronomy 29 and 29 says this. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. We don't have a law written in this church. You don't come and see written on the wall. That, you know what? There could be, you could fill those three walls with human laws of conduct and what to do and what not to do in the house of God. but it would have no bearing whatsoever on the life of the Spirit. This is a mystery. The famous scripture that we all know is Colossians. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations. You're sitting in the presence of that mystery. But now has been revealed to the saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That word mystery, musterion, from a derivative of mu. Now, you all knew that, right? That word mu means to shut the mouth. A mystery really talks about something that can't be described. I mean, you can dance around it with words and logic and try to Tell somebody something, but if that mystery is not revealed to them, it's like trying to preach to the unsaved who doesn't want to hear it. 
It's a secret or a mystery through the idea of silence imposed by initiation into religious rites. You know how many religions there are in this world? Both secular and religious organizations sworn to take an oath not to do, you know, divulge any of these secrets of the cult or whatever. But we walk into a room today called by an unknown force. by something that draws us to compel us that we can't be out there raking the yard today because I am called to this place for some reason. Psalms 25 says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. And he will show them to his covenant. He will show them his covenant. So I didn't go where I was planning to go. But I went where I think the Spirit took me. Hopefully, it caused you to think a little bit about what it might be in the atmosphere of this house. And it might cause you to release yourself to the realm of worship just out of obedience and allow God to happen. Amen.